And at 9, Cal takes on TCU in the Cheez It Bowl in Phoenix. No. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry for laughing at that. That has to do with you with your Cheez It story when, when you were I was stuck, stuck on a plane. On a plane one. That's all there was for eight hours yep. just Cheez Its. I'll never eat another one again. Never eat another Cheez Its. <laughs> and so. they're good. I like them. You I can enjoy that. Them again. Enjoy that bowl game? Uh, uh, I'll probably watch. All right. I'm Jamie. That's Dave. That's Pete. This is CBS Sports HQ's Fantasy Football Today. And it's now time for everybody's favorite game. Name that player. I give these guys a clue. They give some clues. They give some answers. You will ring your favorite bell. All right. Let's start with quarterbacks. Quarterback A. He's a former first-round pick from an ACC school. He scored a combined 20. Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston. Wow. Look at you. Out of the gate. One. Nothing. Quarterback B, he's also a former first-round pick from an ACC school. He scored 24 fantasy points against his Week 17 opponent when they first met, and he has at least 21 fantasy points in five of seven games on the road this year. Philip Rivers. He, is that right? Wow. 2-0. Oh. Wow. Are you cheating again? No. No. All right. 2-0. Oh, I don't know. Wow, <laughs> Accusing me of cheating. I didn't say that. I said Can I we get the know. control room? Tell All him right, I'm not so cheating. Jameis Winston lit up the Falcons. He was our start of the week that week. First time these two teams met. And you have Phillip Rivers going against the Broncos. He scored 24 points against them the last time. Which of these two guys do you like better this week? I like Rivers better, even if he only plays three quarters. I think his opportunity to bounce back against Denver in that secondary is awesome. So I'll take him. Pete? I'll probably go with Winston. Me too. I, I think I think. Rivers might get yanked at some point in that game. Uh, Do you think Jameis could get yanked in the game? No. no. For Ryan Griffin? No. I think Jameis. Absolutely not. I think Jameis has. Griffin in seconds. I think Jameis goes off with a big game. His last three games at home, over 20 or more fantasy points. And he, wa and he wants to. And he wants to be the guy Statement next game. year. Yep. Yeah. I think it's a good game for Jameis. I like him slightly better than Rivers. All right. Quarterback A in this scenario. His first ever throw in the NFL resulted in a pick six. He has 500. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Very good. Quarterback B. He has passed for at least 334 yards in four of his past six games, and he has at least three touchdowns in three of those games. With a win this week and some help, he will unexpectedly lead his team into the playoffs for the second year in a row. Nick Foles. Nick Foles. And he was the number three fantasy quarterback in Week 16, which was just his second start since Week 2. All right, so you have Sam Donald coming off two amazing performances, but he's playing on the road at New England. And you have Nick Foles also playing on the road at Washington, which these two guys you like better. Foles all the way. Great matchup for him against Washington. They just sent DJ Swearinger packing. Sam Darnold's going to get housed by Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Yeah, I, I would probably take Nick Foles. I, I think he's going to, look, he's on a roll. The guy's rolling and uh, DJ So Swearinger, is Darnold, though. DJ Swearinger is not good against the against The the, pass, the, the one thing you've seen, the Patriots, the Patriots allow 18 fantasy points or less to every quarterback on average that has uh, come into New England. And Darnold, his high so far on the road this season, has been 17 fantasy points. So... Those two things do not Plus, he looks up. like Will Brinson in that picture. Plus, he looks like Will Brinson. Okay, <laughs> if you say so. All right. Running backs now. Running back A. He was a fourth-round pick in the 2017 NFL draft from a school in Florida. He has a touchdown in three games in a row with four total touchdowns over that span. And despite playing with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL this season, he has just 14 catches in the 12 games he was able to play. Three, two. I guess. I'll, I'll guess Marlon Mack. You will guess correctly. Marlon oh, Mack. all right. He had nine touchdowns, nine total touchdowns this year, huh? Uh, no. I didn't think he had that many. Nobody said nine total touchdowns. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did it said on the graphic? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. His graphic said nine yes. touchdowns. Okay, yes. Uh, all right, running back B. He scored at least 13 PPR points in three games in a row, despite rushing for fewer than 50 yards in each outing. Last week, he scored on a pass that did not come from his quarterback. Who got that first? I thought I got it first. Do we have an instant replay? Back, control room. Who got that first? Dave got it first. David Johnson. David Johnson. Well, make I don't back know here. about that one. <laughs> I had the answer, too. I don't know about uh, it first. Despite being a bust for the season, David Johnson actually did the number 11 PPR running back coming into week 17. So you got Marlon Mack here. crazy or what? Against the Titans and David Johnson against the Seahawks. Who do you like better this week? I'm going to go with Mack. It's, it's In a, PPR also? Uh, mm, yeah, probably. I know that Tennessee's run defense looks good numbers-wise, but they're not going to have Jarrell Casey in the middle of that unit. I think Mac finds the end zone. I will never, ever, ever 
play a Cardinals offensive player behind that offensive line <laughs> in history. It is the worst I've ever seen. But he's so, still finding um, a way to be productive, though. Not this week. Okay. I'll take yep. back. All right, next running back situation, running back A. He's been one of the best injury replacement running backs this season, scoring a touchdown in four of his past five games. He had one of the biggest surprise games in Week 16 with 107 rushing yards and a touchdown, but that's his only 100-yard rushing game of the year. Is it Jamal Williams? It's not Jamal Williams. No one knows where he will be playing at home in 2019, even if he stays with oh, his current team. I can't guess again, right? Nope. No one knows where he'll be playing at home, even if he stays with his playing at home. Three, two, I'll take a Boise guess. State. I'll take a guess. Um, Boise State. You had to throw that in there? Yeah. You weren't going to get it otherwise. No. Go ahead. Doug Martin. Oh. Running back beat. He's an undrafted rookie free agent from North Texas. Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Wow. Not even giving Pete a chance. Comeback City. Well, he also he, had to throw in the Boise State when I'm getting ready to make the answer on Doug Martin. He gave me the answer. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got Doug Martin here coming off that strong performance, though. Tough game against Kansas City, and you have Jeff Wilson stepping in for the injured Matt Breida against the Rams. Which of these two guys like better? I'm going to go with Doug Martin, believe it or not. I like the setup for him against Kansas City. It's a bad run defense. They've been giving him a lot of work. I think he can score again. He's a top 20 running back for me. I don't hate Jeff Wilson either. I just like Doug Martin a little bit more. I like Doug Martin this week as well, and I'll go on record to say on Monday I said to play Doug Martin daily, remember? Good job. Yeah, I'm going to go Jeff great. Wilson. I just think his role in this offense will be a little bit more needed, especially with the injuries at the receiver spot for the 49ers. No Dante yep. Pettis, no Marquise Goodwin. Once upon a time, he had eight catches in the game. All right, let's go now to our wide receivers. Wide receiver A, he is the number 19 wide receiver in PPR despite having the fewest targets, catches, and yards. He heads into Week 17 on a three-game scoring slump, and he also failed to, failed to score against his Week 17 opponent the first time these two teams met earlier this season. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett. And he played at the same college as his father, who ended his career as the school's all-time leading receiver. At Kansas State. And mm -hmm. Tyler ended up breaking all of his father's records. It's all the Lockett's win, I think. Next Lockett wide receiver. Love it. He also played at the same college as his father. He heads into Week 17 as his team's leading receiver over the past three games. And while he is not the most high-profile wide receiver on his own team, he is married to a supermodel. I think this is how you pronounce it. Chanel Iman. Married to a supermodel. He's married yeah. to a supermodel. Uh, uh, Three. I'll take a guess. Two. Go ahead. <laughs> no, Are you going to guess? No. Julian Edelman. No. <laughs> Sterling Shepard. Wrong Patriot. He's married to a supermodel. Sterling Shepard is married to Sterling. Supermodel. So you got Tyler Lockett here uh, coming off of three bad games. Doug Baldwin taking over as the lead guy in Seattle. And Shepard playing without Odell Beckham. Who do you like better? I'm going to go with Lockett. But it's not by a lot. I think they're both toward the 20s in wide receiver rankings this week. I'll take Shepard in PPR because I know he'll catch more passes. I'm probably going to go with Shepard. Because I think, who knows how the Cowboys are going to play yep. this week. I'm going to take Lockett, non-PPR, and Shepard in PPR. All right, next two wide receivers. Wide receiver A. Despite a downgraded quarterback from last year to this year, he has more catches and yards than he did in 2017. He scored 14 PPR points in two games in a row and has reached that mark in three of his past four outings, despite not scoring a touchdown over that stretch. Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson. Who did have a quarterback... What would you say, a quarterback downgrade? Downgrade. Some might say he had a quarterback upgrade because when Aaron Rodgers didn't play last year. Yeah, he was little, get the clue right. Sean Kaiser. Uh, well, so I told our producer, so wait, I said so, this will be a little bit tricky. So Brett Hundley is uh, better than uh, Derek Carr in no, your mind? No, Aaron Rodgers is what people think the quarterback is for the Packers. <laughs> wide receiver B. Who made that clue? He enters week 17 as the number 24 wide receiver in PPR. Despite not having the same quarterback all season, he has at least 14 PPR points in six of his past nine games. And he was considered the number four wide receiver at best on his own team coming into the season, including behind one guy that Pete Prisco absolutely loved. D.D. Westbrook. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I know who it is. <laughs> Can I hit? I don't know no, who it is. No, just wait till Dave gets I, I think I, I, I don't Three. think this is right, though. Is it Chris Two. Godwin? It's Chris not, Godwin is the one he loves. It's Adam Humphreys. It's Adam oh, Humphreys. He's behind, behind the guy. So, I, I, thought, I thought Keelan Cole when I went to the U.S. Nope. Yeah. Yep. All right, so once again, Pete cannot win unless they're going to give some bonus points to the tight end. I'll let them tell me that in my ear. 
This is, this is the last name that player of the season. We'll go now to the tight ends. Are we getting I, bonus I points? We, I think we need to go back to the video tape. Four points David for the tight ends question. each? Four points each for the tight end. Oh, four points so, for the tight end. Oh, forget about everything that you saw. Four right. points. All right. right. This is Here like we go. family feud now. Tight end A. Triple. Tight end A. He was a fourth round pick in this year's NFL draft. Oh, Ian Thomas. Who That's who it is. Nope. He has oh. five games this season with double digits in TPR. One of those was against his Week 17 opponent earlier this year. And I expect him to be a breakout tight end in 2019. Oh, Chris Herndon. Chris Herndon. Yeah, <laughs> Tight but Ian Thomas was the first name in my yeah. mind, too. That's fine. Tight NB. It's weird. He has five games this season with double digits in PPR. Three of them have come in the past three games. In 2017, he set the record for most receptions and receiving yards by a rookie tight end in the first eight games of the season. The breakout tight end of his draft class came out of the fifth round, but he is one of three tight ends drafted in the first round of the 2017 NFL Draft. So he only has two touchdowns this year. I should know that one. Three, two, one. Blast off. Three tight ends drafted in the first round of the 2017 NFL Draft. David Njoku. Mm -hmm. Forget the other guy. <laughs> and Evan Ingram. <laughs> O.J. Howard. It's Evan Ingram. Yeah. Evan Ingram. Well, Evan Ingram. there we go. We end with nobody answering the question. That's a hell of a way to send off this game. Congratulations, Dave. You continue the uh, beatdown of Pete Prisco and name that player. When we come back, we are going to take a look at the start of the week for Week 17. Who Baker Mayfield. Who is it? Baker Mayfield was awesome last week. We'll see if Go this guy. Go back to him against the Ravens. We'll also no. show us some real courage. No, we'll also <laughs> see if this guy can carry that mantle and have another successful week. Stay right here to CBS Sports HQ and Fantasy Football Today.